So yesterday when we were doing just muscles and reactives, we were doing we were, we were doing them um, without really a deep interaction with innate in innate awareness. When we're finding the reactors and reactives, we're connecting deeply with innate awareness. So we want to do pre-checks first. Yesterday, because we're just working with muscles, without without asking sort of questions of the innate, other than what muscles are reacting to what, we didn't really need to do the pre-checks, but today, before we do this procedure, definitely need to do the pre-checks. And just block a nostril. And then I'll just give you a say, uh, I receive muscle monitoring. I receive muscle monitoring. I receive kinesiology. I receive kinesiology. <coughs> Oops. That's all right. Um, I work with Guy. I work with Guy. Uh, I receive change. I receive change. In alignment with the highest in potential. Alignment with the highest potential. Awesome. All right. So, um, this side, yeah. yeah. Just looking at the scar. So, so it was the tri it was made it was the tricep uh, that we feeling the cramping. So is it? I extend my arm. Mm -hmm. and there's a cramp in the tricep. Yeah. In the tricep. And was so it? Mm -hmm. Did it feel like the whole the tricep group? The lower part. The lower part. Yeah. Okay. So. What I'll try and do is I'll try and isolate the tricep because it's three muscles, if possible. So we'll just have a look at the tricep muscle in the book. I don't, I don't think we can isolate it through muscle testing, but we might be able to do specific muscle, touch that part of the tricep, and then muscle test it. Uh, so let's have a look. So the tricep is a... Uh, spleen muscle. So if I don't know that, and I don't want to look through the whole book, I'll look at it alphabetically in the back of the book to find the page number, and then I can work out what meridian it's connected to. So we've got the long head. the lateral head and the medial head. So see the, the insertion, they all insert into the olecranian process. And then the long head the infradrenal humeral of the scapula. So that's in this shot on this one. So that's down in here. Does it feel do you think it might be that one? Not on that side obviously, but I'm just showing them where the that's the origin of the long head. So you might just have one enmeshed tricep. Yeah. Okay, so I w we won't worry about that. We'll just do the tricep as a group. All right, so um, I'll check the tricep muscle in the clear first. On this side, just relax and then hold. Excellent. And then I'll do uh, reactive mode with specific muscle. Put that in circuit. And then see what the indicator is doing. And then I'll touch the spleen alarm point. So following the... There we go. So I can feel the spleen alarm, po the 11th rib, the tip of the 11th rib. So I'll just touch that light touch. We'll treat it as a reactor first. And then I'll just engage the muscle. So hold. So I've now specified that I'm working with this trapezius muscle by testing the muscle. So I did the meridian that the muscle's on and then I engage the muscle. 
and then just checking the indicator muscle. Now I'll go through the alarm points. Do I do light touch or deep touch? Deep touch, very good. So um, I might get you to put that in circuit. So if it was a correction for a balance, I would have tapped in to the point where I did this before I did that. And then I would have put that in and then I can then use this circuit and then drop it out and I'm back at the starting point of where I want to correct from. So governing central lung, lung, cardium, heart, liver, liver, gallbladder, gallbladder. Spleen, spleen, kidney, kidney, <laughs> stomach, large intestine, small intestine, uh, sorry, triple heater, small intestine, bladder. So bladder is indicating. So only one meridian. Can you take the circuit? If I had multiple meridians, I wouldn't put it in this circuit because I'd drop it out and then do another meridian. Um, so going to the bladder, we can see the contents page. So we have perineus, sacrospinalis, anterior tibials, posterior tibials. So I'm just going to scan those. So checking, hold, checking the perineus muscle, sacrospinalis, anterior tibials, posterior tibials. How random is that? So how would you find that? So it's down there on the leg. So, so, we, so we know it's the posterior tibials. So that's all, and so there's only one muscle out of the whole body that that's, <coughs> this, this is, this is the reactor and the posterior tibials are the reactive. Because we put this in with a light touch alarm point first, it's primed as a reactor. And when we're doing the second phase of looking for the, al the, the alarm point, we're doing deep touch. So that's definitely reactive. We just don't know what side it's on. Awesome. So you can drop the circuit. And now I'm going to go and check the posterior tibials on both sides. Because th that's just because reactives themselves are just checked, are just corrected. Yeah, that's just for the investigation, so the body knows what it's looking for. As soon as we put the muscle in circuit and start working with other muscles, it it just works. It doesn't need like priming. But for the the innate awareness needs that priming to be able to hone in on which ones are actually reactive and which ones aren't, etc. So, so this is the test for the anterior tibials. So it's like straight down. Posterior tibials is going from the pointy position to the um, flex position. So I'll just point your toes, see the hold. That's locking. Point your toes, see the hold. That one's locking. A bit of restricted movement in that one. Really? So that might be the culprit. So we'll go put this one in circuit now, hold. So that's now active, going contraction, contraction, contraction. So it'll be sucking energy from its reactive now, once that's in circuit. And so when I monitor the reactive, um, it should indicate. So point your toes and hold. <coughs> That's not 100%. It's a big foot. And then hold. And that one's okay. You feel the difference? Yeah. So I'll do this one again and then hold. Yeah. So those uh, calf muscles are strong and gnarly and they don't have the sensitivity of a lot of other muscles. So you've got to put a bit of oomph into them when you're testing them. So, and this is a this is a 
sturdy body hold and so you need to test it with a bit of uh, effort. Well, it's good to know. Like, you, you go, hold, hold, hold on those foot ones. You could be unlocking, you won't know unless you put a bit of uh, effort into those um, muscles exclusively, really. It's just these ones of the calves that are really strong. And, the, and they obviously don't have the same proprioceptive sensitivity as other muscles. So even the quadriceps, like it's the biggest muscle group in the body, but when it goes, it just goes so easily, even though it's such a big muscle group. Alrighty, so we know it's the right one. So then we just do the reactive muscle procedure. So all, all, all we do now is we spindle down the triceps. And hold. And hold. And we're going to unlock now. And then foot up. Oh, that's pointed. And then hold. Yeah. That's the correction. And then we'll do the assessment. Challenge it. And then hold. And hold, and that's not reactive anymore. So now I'm going to go the other way and put this one in as a reactive and look for potential reactors. So could I get you to stand up and maybe test your muscle out, see if there's any change? Yeah, I feel less heavy. Less heavy? You still getting that nervy feeling? We'll let's, let's put the problem to the position. The nerve. It could be, but we'll just keep working on it. But See, yeah, that, that heavy feeling is gone, kind of. Yeah. It's still a little bit, but it's definitely a lot less. You can see an, an improvement. And it's not cramping here. Yeah, which it wasn't from, from yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> so now we'll, we'll, we'll look at the, this is a reactive rather than a reactor. So again, we'll put the do the procedure, so specific muscle, reactive mode and then I'll get a hold and then uh, we'll put the stomach alarm point on that uh, spleen alarm point on sorry so I'll put the spleen on so we'll do I'll do it on I'll do it on both sides and I'll do it deep touch So, so that's the difference. Last time we did it light touch. This one we're doing it deep touch. So we're programming into the system that we've got an under energy muscle which is associated with reactive. And then hold. And now when we do the alarm point, so we're going to do light touch or deep touch. No, no. It shouldn't unlock. I'm just checking that it doesn't do anything weird. And so now I'm going to go through and just do um, light touch, so, so which is going to show up the reactors, that this is potentially the reactive part of it. So governing, central, lung, lung, pericardium, <coughs> um, heart, liver, liver, gallbladder, spleen, Spleen, kidney, kidney, stomach, large intestine, triple heater, small intestine, bladder. So we've only got triple heater. So I'll put that in circuit. Can you put your feet together apart? So now with the triple heater, go to the triple heater and then we'll see what potential muscle it might be. So we've got so the teres minor muscle, the sartorius muscle, infraspinatus, flexor hallucis longus, gracilis, gastrocnemius, 
soleus, so gracilis. So that was a new one we did yesterday. And so that's a little bit like an adductor muscle, attaches to the pubic bone, but instead of attaching to the femur, it goes to the, the uh, tibia. Rightio. So only one muscle that's easy by comparison to it. Well, it's one muscle, it could be left or right. Um, so I get to drop the circuit and we'll check the gracilis. So the gracilis is like the adductor because you pull it out, except you turn the foot in. So we turn the foot in, I get you to hold, and that one's unlocking in the clear, and then hold, and that one's locking in the clear. So we'll balance the one on the left. So we could do the, I could just touch the, so was it, was this one that was unlocking? Yeah. So I'll just touch the neurolymphatic point first and hold. And that's working really well. So we'll just go to the neurolymphatics. So it's um, so it's like up from the belly button and out. So if you could touch there. Yeah, both would be good. And then we'll check and then hold. Let's try the other one. <laughs> hold, if that's working. Um, so do you want to rub those for breathing? And on the back, between 10, 11, and 11 and 12. I might get you to sit up for that. So we've got seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then ten, eleven, and then eleven and twelve. And breathing. Excellent. Let's see how that's going. And then hold. And then could you touch the neural lymphatic? And then hold, excellent. So now we've got two locked in gracilis. So now uh, I'll pull one of the gracilis on and I'll check the, tri the tricep. And, and if that doesn't work, I'll put the other gracilis on. But it's probably good to check both as well because they could both be reactors to the one tricep. So we'll do the one that unlocked Hold, and then just relaxing, and then hold, so that one's fine, and then we'll do the other one, and then hold, and then hold, and that one's unlocking. So I'll see if I can jam it, so just relaxing, and then hold. That's the correction. And then we'll challenge. Just relaxing and then hold. Awesome. Do you want to test that out now? Mm -hmm. Difference? And you're yeah, still getting the it butt. Would, it would just be like one big block, kind of. Like yeah. it's all. L just one lump. Together, of kind of like lumped together. Yeah. But it feels lighter. The bottom is like flat. Yeah, cool. So, so you reckon it's the, the, the radial nerve, did you say? Yeah. Not the median yeah, nerve? I think it's more radial. Okay. Yeah. So let, let's, ha let, we'll just see if we can fix that. So just giving you some ideas on what you can do clinically. Shall we have a go, trying to help that? 
<coughs> um, so you can s just sit and watch if you like while we kind of like try and figure out how to work with the, the is it the, ra the, ra the radial nerve? I'll just Okay. Which that, that's in the which radials. ones? Okay. That, that was in the um, yeah. kidneys and the femur. Okay. So it was the extensors. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, so it comes from C five to T one. So it's great when you've got a client who's got so much anatomical knowledge. If 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 I didn't have a client like that, I'd have to ask them about you know. Uh, what was happening after the surgery and then I have to figure that out but he's figured that out so the radial nerve is formed as a continuation of the posterior cord of the brachial plexus and arises from uh, C5 to T1 <coughs> which is similar to the median nerve this, I think the median nerve starts higher so it goes from C2 or 3 um, but I think they both go to T1. Um, it courses from the axilla to the posterior compartment of the arm and then to the anterior compartment of the arm that continues to the posterior compartment of the forearm. And then you can see here the, the fingers that he was saying that are innervated by it. They were the ones that he couldn't extend. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go neuron node and then I'm going to touch T1 which is the big bony lump and then we've got C7 C5 sorry C6 and C5 so that's that's where the the nerves branching from and then I'm going to get you to push so just relax for now so it's the it's these yeah it's all of these bar the little finger it was when my cat Fraser said like that mm -hmm. his neck was uh, when it was flat it was all right see Very okay nice. so that I'm going to replicate the restriction so that's going to activate what's the part of the meat the radial nerve that's been impinged and so then, can you just push up against my fingers? So that's the beginning, and that's the end. And we know that was impinged in some way previously. And, and because it's spanning from the neck to the fingers, now I'm going to touch GV20. Because GV20 connects things together. Remember that one from the heart? Sure you do. So GV20 is the connection point. You'll learn it later anyway. So I'm linking where the nerve's coming out to where the nerve's taking effect. And then GV20 is the connection point between here and here. So that then illustrates that particular nerve, the, the radial nerve, to his innate awareness. And then I can muscle test and then hold and it's hypertonic. So I've tried chakra, G harmonics, there it goes. And then hold, 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 so it's got a quaddy. And because it's a nerve, we can do the physiology points, like the survival points. So I put physiology on. 14, 13, 12, 14, 15, 16. Uh, pleasure, motivation, reward, play. 
maybe you thought arm wrestling was a form of play until, until your arm snapped. I'm wrestling. <coughs> I can feel that it's pulsing like crazy. Alrighty. And then the other thing is a lot a lot of the, the, the whole nerve thing is probably related to the fascia around the nerve sheath. <coughs> so with all the scar tissue that's probably associated with the surgery and the injury, um, the, what might be happening is that all the, 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 you've got all these fascial adhesions. And so when he does certain movements, it's sort of dragging the whole nerve and displacing the nerve and it's creating like aberrant signaling. And so by restructuring the fascia, then the nerve can start to slide appropriately within the muscle and not get dragged around. And you know, if it's up against a piece of metal, it might be able to move against that piece of metal. So we'll put fascia mode on. Pick down to heart. I'll get the immune vial. So remember, you know, in, in, do you feel like you've got any inflammation in that tissue? No. no? We'll put it on anyway, just in case. Can't hurt. Yeah, Not really. It's titanium. It's pretty inert. Yeah, sometimes you can get, like, you know, immu maybe immune, but, um, like, the body, like, the the metal is a problem, but the, it's not. Re, it's not. Your body's got to become more aware of it and adjust around it. Yeah. So there's nothing really that you can do to do damage. It'll only create more awareness. It doesn't have an innate, like it's not doing anything. It's just there, and the body's got to learn to live with it. Yeah. So the more aware the body is of it, the more stress you release around it, the more the body can adapt to the fact that there is metal there and there'll be less problems. So I'll put the immune system on and hold. And then um, we'll go back into fascia mode again. Specific muscle, uh, connective tissue, water, auric field, etheric body, chakra. That was my scanning of the eye. All right. Then I'll check for more information and then correction. So it wants a, another correction. So we've done the fascia, but the body's not seeing that as a correction. So we'll go through a scan chart, so emotion, energy, structure, physiology. So neurology, physiology, so organ, gland. So it's kind of the gland, interestingly. Like it wouldn't be your first thought of what it would want for a correction, but here we go. So we're gonna get all the gland points when we do the MPA. So I'll check the pineal gland. I'll check the anterior pituitary, the hypothalamus, the thyroid, the thymus gland, uh, the pancreas, the adrenals. So the adrenals would have been a bit of adrenaline surge probably during the whole escapade. So to put the adrenals on properly um, for, for form, from formatting, go triple, you can learn all this in the MPA, put triple heater on, touch the kidneys, check the indicator muscle, so, trip, so the adrenals are part of the triple heater system and they sit on top of the kidneys. So we've got triple heater kidneys that activates them. And then I'm gonna check the sartorius muscle. Just relax, give me the weight and then hold. Oh. 
called. So clearing the stress out of the sartorius muscle. Yeah, for both hypotonic. Um, and then uh, could look at um, you know, the tib tibules. No, they're, they're bladder muscles. Uh, was it solus and gastrops or is it all muscles? But they just because they show. Um, okay, so then I could look at MPA. I could look at doing a hologram. So a hologram showing. So that so so we could we're we're, we're going to like do the eye fizz in relation to the adrenals with a hologram, and I'll try putting the adrenals on light touch. No indicator change. Adrenals on deep touch. And then just get them passed. And then we'll look for a reference. Actually, before we do that, I'll just put the muscle on just to be clear that we that that the body is aware it's the adrenals, so I'll just get rid of the hole, and that's indicating. <coughs> and then we'll go looking for the reference to the triple heater. Did I put the kidneys on though? I think I put the kidneys on. So I'll take that off. And then I'll put the adrenals on, or the, the triple heater on. And then, because the adrenals are, wh when you format to the adrenals, you put the triple heater, then the kidney on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. We've got the, the adrenal pathway for the hologram. And so then uh, that was, and it was deep touch. So now I'm looking for the reference. So kidneys showing. So just got kidney, so I'll put kidney on. Them apart, and then I'll check anatomy, physiology. So fix them apart. So I'll get my iFiz manual. And then I'll go to the triple warmer chapter which is orange. And then we'll go to the adrenal part. Not the not the uh, not the trip not the thyroid part. And then we're looking for the kidney as a reference. And physiology is electrolyte production, which is interesting because you're getting cramps. Mm, yeah. <coughs> Pun? Yeah. yeah. So, so he's pointing out that he's getting cramps in his adrenal muscles. So, um, so electrolyte production, and then feet to get them apart. So, the, ma the, the main electrolytes in the body are sodium, potassium, and magnesium. But the magnesium is the one. Magnesium two plus, so but the magnesium is linked more to cramping than sodium or potassium. So in the MPA, there's a whole section on. Minerals, and we're going to see which which one it is. So this is how you know you you're working with the holograms, then cross-referencing back to the MPA. We're working with the MPA and cross-referencing back to the hologram. So when we start the I 
the MPA next semester, you want to be on top of the IFIS and the AWE because they dovetail. <coughs> so going into minerals, and so we've got these points for minerals. So we've got like potassium, uh, where's sodium? <coughs> sodium and magnesium. So, so we've got these points for them. So on the left, it means you need more. And on the right, it means you need to get rid of, you've got an excess. So the point showing on the left is a deficiency. And that's the receptive side. And um, the point showing on the right means that you've got an excess. <coughs> so, kidney 19 is magnesium, and so it describes the position, for, so it's in line with CV12, half a body inch to the side of the central vessel line, the mid midline. So CV12 is like the stomach alarm point, so there's the belly button, there's the xiphoid, so in the middle ish, uh, there's the right side, there's the left side, so that's indicating the lack of magnesium, so the body's saying it wants magnesium. And then we can look at um, the sodium, spleen 16, so that's four body inches lateral to CV11, so that, that'll be a thumb width below, so there's a, that's a thumb width. So that's CV12, there's some, some width below that defines CV11, and then four body inches would be one body inch, two body inch, three body inch, four body inches, and then so that's the right side, see if there's an excess deficiency. So it's not showing up there's a sodium deficiency, but it's showing up there's a magnesium deficiency, and then we'll check um, potassium. So potassium is bladder three. So you've got bladder one right in the eye here. And then you've got bladder two and then bladder three, I think. Or, oh no. You've got bladder one. Bladder two. I've got to look at it. Yeah, so that's, so yeah, so bladder one, bladder two, bladder three, bladder four. So bladder three is just here. So bladder one, bladder two, bladder three. So that's the left side, that's the right side. So your body's just saying magnesium. And it's showing up on the correct side. So sometimes when people have like heavy metal poisoning, the nervous system gets confused, particularly with mercury, and it, tells the body it wants to get rid of primary minerals and it wants to scour and take in heavy metals once it gets confused beyond a certain point. But we'll, we'll explain all that in the MPA. So back to the magnesium, so that's here. So it's showing on the left. Feet's going to part. So now we use the magnets to download magnesium energetically. So, and that's why you, it's a good idea to get your magnets because you'll need them. So, so they're, they're, so then I'll, I'll just confirm the point. Chakra, brow chakra. South Pole on to get rid of anything blocking the mineral coming in. Uh, Kirk, this one, this one, this one, that one.
you feel any changes with the magnets? Sometimes people feel, you know, they get metallic tastes coming or they get, you know, like with magnesium, sometimes the body relaxes. Can you? Any more? All right. <coughs> and then um, with the hologram, now I'm just going to check thought, feeling, attitude. I'll also check reactivity. Hold. Do we want any more? So it actually that corrected the hologram segment. But usually, I actually didn't do it the way I should do it. I should have put the, um, just found the mineral and then gone back and checked the hologram before I did that because there might have been a thought or feeling that came up. But by doing the actual download of the mineral, I probably blocked something else that might have shown. So that's not ideal doing it that way. But <coughs> it seems to have solved it for now. So hold any more, balance complete. So I'll just take that off. I'll get you to drop the circuit and I'm going to reactivate the nerve and then just see if there's any stress there. So I'll go neuron mode. So neuron mode, so that's from neurophys. So you want to get up on all of that if you're doing the neurophys two and three. So neuron mode, so deep touch, deep touch. Then T1 to T5. Then activate the nerve, so we've got this position, and then, yeah, that's right, just bend it, and then push, and then hold, or GV20, to connect here to here, and then stress testing, any more? So testing in relation to um, arm wrestling accident. I don't know if it's an accident, but <laughs> arm wrestling misadventure, and then um, connecting it to, uh, testing it in relation to surgery. Uh, testing it in relation to metal uh, implants. Testing in relation to tingling sensation on, on in certain positions. And then just to anchor that, I'll just get you to look up to the right with your eyes, up to the left, more up, mm -hmm. and then up to the right, up to the left. Just keep looking up, breathing in, breathing out, looking up here, breathing in, breathing out. So that just helps clear relationships of things, doing the eye modes. And yeah, a bit of inner tea. So I pulled out little gems. And then I'll get you to stand up and we'll assess the... Don't break the table. <laughs> Not bothering anymore. Yeah, well, that was his goal. See what they see what they do, they go. Yeah. High five. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for that. You're welcome. Cool. So so that's where we so we we've combined, you know, like structure with muscles, reactivity, um, and then with the physiology, the MPA. So you can see how Everything kind of hyperlinks together when you're doing the kinesiology.